I had a crush on Casper when I was a kid too. That was another favorite movie. I was gonna say, oh, I am a basic, you know what? Let's just start this again because I'm an idiot and I didn't push record. Tis the season. Hi all and welcome back. We're back with our unscripted and filtered and ranty episodes. Uh, well, actually, this is not like ranty episode or anything, but we're talking about all the spooky season things today, Woo! and I, we just get excited. So, <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's very, very broad. I know, but it's, it's just, time. It was time. To. It's October. It's yeah, season. exactly. So, basically, yeah, we're excited. I'm Valia. By the way, hi. I'm Joanna. I'm Stacy and I'm Abby. Yeah, and we're here to talk all the things. So, how excited are we that it's October? Because yes. I'm excited. It's like my oh, favorite yeah. month. <laughs> Me too. It's, it's my not even my birthday for sure. month. It's my birthday month. Mine too. Woo-hoo. Yeah, you're the 17th, right? <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah. Both of you. I'm the 19th. Best, 19th, okay, best day. Yeah, almost birthday buddies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We have a lot of queens who have October uh, birthdays, which is Jay, Abby, fun. do you have Sweetest Day where you live? Swedish you ever heard day? of that? Su- sweetest Day. It's like Valentine's Day number two for people in Ohio, and I hate it. What? <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. Is it on your birthday? Is that why so you So it's the it? weekend of my birthday. It depends because it's always oh. on a Friday or Saturday or whatever. It has been on my birthday. So if I try to go out to dinner, it's like basically Valentine's Day and you can't get in anywhere. It drives me. Oh. But they, when, where I'm from, I'm from Maryland and they didn't have it. So I moved to Ohio and now it's new to me. And I'm like, what is this? So I'm so confused. I don't know like, where it came from. Why is it called sweet, sweet, sweetest day? Sweetest, sweetest, sweetest day? like you're my sweetest. Sweet. Oh, that's so okay. weird but that's i want know i guess <laughs> <laughs> i know i already don't like valentine's right. day because it's so busy yeah. to go anywhere yeah. so now they stole my birthday <laughs> <laughs> i yeah that's i mean you can never mind i'm not gonna encourage you to go all spooky on <laughs> you should <laughs> Some October thing. You should totally show <laughs> up in like a Grim Reaper outfit, just like with all the sweetest <laughs> like dining <laughs> options. And then there's you with your outfit and like the scythe. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I always I love uh I love watching videos of like couples who prank each other, you know, like those are like my favorite ones. And I really love when it's Halloween season because then everybody has like these houses that are decorated mm-hmm. and like all this stuff. And then you have like them pranking each other in costumes and I'm like, I'm here. This is the kind of love I love. <laughs> my neighbor does that. They all they're so into Oh really? Oh, yeah, they're so into Halloween. Like we let them borrow one of our trees this year and I kid you not, there is a 20 foot ghoul hanging from my tree with like flapping whatever's and like this distorted (laughs) mask but they'll sit out on their porch dressed in like a scarecrow outfit pretending to be a prop and then when the trick-or-treaters come they like leap out it's so bad i love it i remember being terrified by one of those as a kid i didn't know people still did that (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah Well, my neighbors, That's Halloween is kind fun. of their year-round aesthetic. Like, you walk into mm. their house and there's skulls everywhere and, like, bones. Okay. And, yeah. So, this is their favorite time of year. So, they go all out. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. I really do love when people get into it because it's just, I don't know, it's just so it fun. Is. I love I, I love spooky things. I love Halloween. You guys know this. I watch horror movies year round because they're my comfort movies. That's Let's so not weird. Like that. I know it's so bizarre. <laughs> okay, like what it about really what about horror movies makes them your comfort blanket? I'm really curious. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I guess this is like way more psychological than you know. I probably want to be. I know. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. No. Um, I think it's just the whole concept of the fact that, first of all, somebody's life is way more horrible than mine. Um, so that, that gives me, that brings me comfort. It's like, it, things could be worse. I could be chased down by a serial killer, you know? No, but there's just also like the structure to them that I really like as a as a planner I like I just like to see things in a structured way and when it comes to like especially slasher movies which are like my favorite like you have that structure like you know things are going to happen a certain way and you know you know 
you know what to expect and because movies don't surprise me like I haven't been scared or surprised by a movie in I don't know how old am I that many years probably (laughs) but um there's like I don't know there's just this comfort of like knowing and then I also really love the fact that sometimes slasher movies end badly like (laughs) that people don't live or stuff like that then you're like okay yeah like is it the unknown because sometimes they turn out okay and sometimes they don't (laughs) yeah that too but I don't know there's just there's just something about them that it's like they're so predictable and they're so campy and so out of control that it's like it makes me feel more in control I guess I don't know I honestly don't (laughs) I just know that like I love them and I will watch them all the time I do have to say I ranted about this early I guess this is a ranty episode I'm gonna just take the spotlight for a second but there's a movie that came out recently okay should i name it do it is it the one with is it the one with nicholas cage no it's um it's malignant that movie that came out it It was everywhere okay so i'm not gonna spoil anything but i am gonna say that the whole time so i love the conjuring movies i think they're very well done and directed and they're like i will watch them anytime so the same no no i can't do those ones (laughs) yeah i can't watch those ones (laughs) Well, the same guy that created those did Malignant, and they were making this huge big deal, the next awesome horror classic coming, blah, 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 this whole big thing. And I watched this movie, and like 10 minutes in, I'm like, okay, I bet you it's this, and I bet you it's this, and I bet you it's this. And I was like basically right i mean he did kind of take a spin on one of the thoughts that i had like he did it a weird way that i wouldn't have done it myself you know as a writer Mm -hmm. but i still was not shocked and also it wasn't it wasn't what they presented it to be like the expectations that they set up were not met and by the time i was done with this movie i was so angry (laughs) i'm like oh yeah is this the movie that breaks me like is this the movie that gonna make me hate horror movies (laughs) it's all about those reader expectations watcher expectations yeah yeah you gotta gotta meet those but anyway i just i'm so angry at that movie still (laughs) (laughs) like i can't uh, anyway moving on (laughs) so uh, i can't watch horror movies anymore for reasons reasons oh yeah so first of all before we get into your reasons because we are going to get into your yes, reasons. they're fun reasons. <laughs> Not really. I do want to... <laughs> I know. No, I did want to ask, like, what do you guys watch during this season? Like, is there specific movies that you have to watch? Like, I have a friend. Me and him always watch Hocus Pocus. Like, that's, that's just, like, mine. a thing. I think that's my okay. only one. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Not big into horror movies, but I do like Hocus yeah. Pocus. I also really love Hollow in Town. That's a cute one. Abby, you need to watch yeah. it. You watched Hocus Pocus for the first time? Yeah, like what? a year ago. Because I didn't grow up watching it, like scary movies. Mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to. And so it's a little different. Like when you're watching it for the first time when mm-hmm. you're older, you're like, oh, this is, huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I classic. also tried, I also tried watching like, I think it's called like Boil, Boil, Double Trouble. The one with Mary-Kate and Ashley in it. <laughs> I about died. It oh, was, yeah, yeah. Toil- yeah. yeah. I tried a That's little funny. movie marathon. Nice. I mean, besides the Hocus Pocus and uh, Halloween Town, I always try to watch the Scream movies, like all the the four Scream movies. And there's another one coming next year. I'm so excited. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm a little weird. I know. <laughs> um, last year, I did a rewatch of all the Friday the 13th movies uh, during Halloween like week. And then the year before that, I did all the Halloween movies the week before halloween and it's funny though because i don't like celebrate halloween like i don't go out i don't dress up i don't really ha- like uh decorate for it but the movies man. <laughs> it's just an excuse to watch your favorite movies exactly they get me they- yeah it is the season <laughs> now do you watch Basically. like comical horror movies like the screen queens yeah. movie like the series that came out because i love that show, that was funny i do i did watch that um one of my favorite like recent slasher-esque uh horror comedies is ready or not it's so bonkers but it's so well done i really love that one and then there is another one that's like the similar type it's called your next um so both like very slasher very dark comedy but they're just so fun and then netflix did a duology of movies um the babysitter 
and then like the babysitter returns those both of those also give me like the slasher comedy like i don't know they're just so fun they're so fun and campy okay so those are like the four that are recent loves yeah i can talk about this (laughs) (laughs) hence the reason we're doing this episode Mm -hmm. (laughs) exactly the ladies just like to indulge me sometimes in like my favorite stuff of course (laughs) i love the nightmare before christmas i'm gonna call myself a hipster i have liked that since i saw it in the theater when it came out when i was a kid i love that movie it's like a cult favorite now but yeah but that's i don't know i love that like i love the yeah that you like love it since you were a kid yeah in fact for my 11th birthday cake my mom put she's artistic and she put jack and sally on my 11th birthday cake oh that's so cute yeah like i've been a fan for a very long time so we we recently got a big blow up um projector screen we had we had a projector at our old house and it was just sitting in the garage and we we have a really fun community here and so we're like let's get a huge projector screen and put it out on the lawn to watch movies with all the neighborhood like families oh, and I kids love and stuff that. so we've done it twice and um, we watched Coco last time and Nightmare Before Christmas is definitely happening <laughs> so yeah. yeah. We're excited to watch all of the fun, like, kid ones. And so That's everyone gets really bundled cool. up and they bring their popcorn out and their lawn chairs. And, and blankets. And fuzzy blankets. blankets. But, yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas is definitely going to be one that we're going to be watching this year. <laughs> oh, I love that. I want to do that. It's so fun. I'll have to I show know, you guys right? pictures. It's yeah, so fun. Yeah, please do. It's so fun. We do a dance party before and all the kids get into it and, yeah. Oh, that's like, I don't know. That's amazing. (laughs) I love that so much. But okay, so while we're on the subject of Joanna, hey. (laughs) No. Yes. Reasons? Um, So is it reason time? Oh, reasons. I was going to say, I had a crush on Casper when I was a kid, too. That was another one. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure everybody did. Okay, I I wasn't the only one. (laughs) No. I remember, I don't know if it was like a TikTok or a meme that I saw, but it was just like my sexual awakening at 12 (laughs) when like Casper becomes a human for that dance. There's a whole (laughs) TikTok trend going around with that kind of thing. All just all the different things that like we had big crushes on and some of them are like the gargoyles. I never watched that, but that would be interesting. Wait, wait, one. the gargoyles? Yes, it's TV, so it's a cartoon. Oh, oh my gosh. And yeah, well, some of them are like supposed to be the weird ones where you're like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but a lot of people agree with that one, so that's interesting. I haven't seen it, so I don't That's know. funny. I have, and I can't <laughs> see it, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I watched horror movies as comfort movies, so I can't judge anybody <laughs> about anything. No, but yeah, Joanna, tell us, tell us some, uh, some stories, some reasons. Yes, some story reasons. time. Story time. <laughs> so, and okay, so here's what's so funny. A lot of people think that the reason why we moved was because our house was haunted and everyone kept telling us to get out of the house. <laughs> but, okay, so you're just going to hear the story here. So my son, he, ca- caveat, I know not everyone believes in ghosts. I have family members that don't believe that this is real. But when you've experienced it, it's hard. It's, it's a little, a little different. different. Yeah, yeah. Like, Experience like, changes things. Exactly. It does. So I was, anyway, so my son, he's now nine, but he, he can see spirits and he has always been able to. He can still see them. I have conversations with him. He doesn't like to talk about it, but I have conversations with him still just to see what kinds of things he's seeing but in the beginning before we knew this he was like four when he started like verbalizing and he you know all kids talk about like monsters under the bed or whatever yeah but this was this is like real (laughs) (laughs) real monsters yeah real monsters so he he used to talk about these like witches that were underneath mom and dad's bed and that they would come out and talk to him and um, so my youngest, she was a baby. This was back in 2016, this story. Um, I was up in the middle of the night feeding the baby because she was only a couple of months old. And my oldest, he was four at the time. He came out to sit next to me on the couch. It was about 3 a.m., which is 
the witching hour. In fact, he even mm-hmm. talks about that. <laughs> and he started talking about this witch that was beneath mine and my husband's bed. And I was not wanting to discount him. You know, you don't want to tell your kids that you right. don't believe him or whatever. So I was just talking to him. And as we were talking, um, he, he said, oh, the witch came out here into the living room where we were sitting, where he and I were sitting. And he pointed across the room, and at the time our computer was on the other side of the room. And all of a sudden the screen lit up as if someone had touched the mouse to like move flash it, the, like bump to like into move it. it. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. it's right there. And like right then, it didn't like, the computer didn't flash first. It was, he says, oh, it's there. And then the computer flashed like on. And then he started getting panicked. And he's a pretty like, he doesn't get scared of things really. And he was saying, he's like, it was, it's coming closer to us, Mom. And he, like, tucked his feet up close to himself. He's like, it's right there on the floor. That's crazy. So he was, like, he was scared. It was making me scared, too, because it's 3 a.m., hey. you know. So we're religious and said some prayers to get rid of the spirit and get it out of the house. And it left, but that wasn't the end. But what was what was interesting, too, is that, he was like shocked that it actually left through the prayer. So it was like mm. he wasn't making it up, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So then um, he and my middle child, who was two at the time, they would have nightmares all the time. And my oldest would talk about how the witch had come back to the house. This is this witch, um, he like would promise, I promise I'll be good. And then Jace, my son, would, like, let him back in the house. So, anyway, we went through this for a long time. And there was one night that my two-year-old, he was crying because of a nightmare. He had just had a nightmare. My oldest was asleep, um, and the baby was asleep. And so I, like, woke up my husband to, like, say a prayer on the house to, like, get rid of the evil spirits Mm -hmm. and stuff. And he was saying a really long prayer. I couldn't remember everything that he said. But right when he said the words to, like, cast out the spirits, we heard this, like, really loud bang in the other room, in my oldest son's room. And it sounded like he had fallen out of bed. And so as my husband was praying, as he was praying, like, he just kept going. And I'm like, oh, my son's going to run out here all, like, sad because he fell out of bed. But he never did. He never did. And after it was over, we went into his bedroom to check on him. And he was asleep in his bed, like as if nothing had happened. And so um, luckily we all felt better. We went to bed and went to sleep. And the next morning I didn't say a word to my son of what had happened the night before. And he's like, he, he came up to me. He's like, hey, mom, that witch pushed me out of bed last night. So that loud crash was, yeah. So that was pretty scary. Um, yeah. no kidding. Yeah, that yeah, was terrifying. <laughs> so a few years, like a couple years later, because we dealt with this thing like on and off and stuff. We had some like ghost investigators come into our house to kind of figure out what was going on. Um, and they had told us that there was a, like a shaman, like a Native American shaman who was protecting the ground or whatever and asked the shaman to like stay out of our house to protect the house that was fine um but things always kept happening and so um eventually we had we had there was a family member related to a native american shaman like a living one and we had him come out to our house and he did a bunch of like he told us this long story about the people that had lived there and why they were there. And the reason that they had come out was because my son could talk to them and stuff. So hmm. kind of was kind of cool in the end. And um, things were a lot better after that. But what's, what's interesting is that, like, they never truly left. So when we moved to our new house, we had been here for maybe six months or so. And I just asked him, I was like, hey, are there any ghosts in here? He's like, yeah there are (laughs) I was like are they the same ones are they he's like no they're different but they weren't bothering him Hmm. so we're like I think we're always going to be dealing with this sort of thing (laughs) we just have to how does your son cope with that um it's hard because he has a lot of behavioral emotional challenges like he's borderline on the spectrum which you know we think is the reason why 
maybe he can see him. We have had, we have talked to a medium. She came out to our old house and she could tell just by looking at him that he like can see them really good. Like she described it to us like the sixth sense. Have you guys seen the sixth sense movie? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How mm-hmm. the, she says that how the ghosts look in that movie is very accurate to how she sees them and how my son sees them. And so um, mm. she gave me her card, her home phone number. She's like, if you ever need to call me, I can give you some tips. She gave us some tips on how to keep the bad spirits out and only have the good ones okay. in. And he knows that those types of things work. And so um, we make sure to do those things. And But what's funny is like he's not afraid of anything. Like when I was rewatching Supernatural episodes for our podcast a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, he like sat, he's like, what's this mom? And I thought he was going to be scared because my other son was like, turn this off. It's scary. And <laughs> he just thinks it's cool. And so he wants to, he's like asking me the title of it so he can go watch it because, because he can see Aww. him. Like he's not afraid of this type of stuff. So you have to give him a sense of control. Like I mean, when you have cool. all of the information, because otherwise if you feel like you have no control and no yeah. one believes you. Like that would be really, really traumatizing. But yeah, yeah, for sure, it's true. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you guys are definitely doing well on the yeah. support he, of that. He definitely sure. doesn't like to talk about it. But you know, one of his favorite things is Ghostbusters, and I think what you said, Stacy, is exactly the reason why he likes Ghostbusters because. Like, he was a Ghostbuster for Halloween a couple years in a row. He likes to mm-hmm. build the little boxes to keep the ghosts in yeah. and all, you know, so. Oh, man, he really needs to get into Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does, right? he does for things. real. <laughs> he likes all the scary stuff. <laughs> but because yeah. of that, like, I used to watch horror movies um, this time of year. But I haven't been able to bring myself to do it <laughs> because yeah, I had some experiences. Too. Mine were different. I can't see ghosts or anything, but it's terrifying when your kid can. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've only ever had like demon experiences. I've never had ghost That's experiences. That's scary. Yeah. Well, you know how, like, in the Bible, it says, like, you play, pray a hedge of protection mm-hmm. around the church. Like, that's something that is in the Bible. And I never really understood that until I was in college because I was like, okay, like, you know, we pray over everything, right? Like, why not? If that's, you know, if that's what you believe, then you're going to pray for protection. But I never understood why specifically. <laughs> but I don't remember if I've told this story on here before, but... I was working, I worked um, all through college and I worked uh, two jobs. And so sometimes I would have to work at like two o'clock in the morning (laughs) uh, when I was on campus. And so I was on campus, I was in an office in the back of a Baptist tree, like up in the back hallway and I was all by myself and everything was like super dark and I was just in front of the computer and I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden over my shoulder right over my shoulder I was like well yeah and um, I kind of turned around and I was like I'm sorry what (laughs) like who's in here with me and I like felt like somebody was standing behind me you know and then I like got up and I opened the door and I was thinking maybe one of the security guards because we had like security guards patrolling the campus. Um, I was like, maybe they came through and like saw the light on and decided to mess with me. And no, there was nobody there at all. I like <laughs> later I talked to them because they were in the guard shack when I walked out. And I was like, did you guys do your rounds? And they were like, no, we haven't done rounds yet. You're like, you're early today to leave, you know? And I was like, oh, okay. But then anyway, so as I'm sitting there, I like went back and sat down and it happens again, but like on my other side. And I was just like, all right, that's it. I'm going to bed. Oh, like, no. I'm going to bed. I'm And yeah. And so then the next day I was talking to my boss, who's like, that's the, her office. And she was just like, oh yeah, that has happened to me. And I'm like, what do you mean that has happened <laughs> so to you? So casual about I it. Don't, I know. She's just like, oh yeah. But the whole thing is that, you know, like when people come to church, sometimes they are demon possessed. And if they get saved, you know, the demon leaves like, where does it go? It doesn't go anywhere. That's why we pray a hedge of protection over the church, because we want to expel those demons. And so sometimes they don't. And sometimes they hang around and they're like, you know, and I truly believe that, you know, obviously I'm safe. So like the, de- the demon can't get into me, but he, the demons can mess with us <laughs> regardless. So I'm like, OK, cool. Note to self. <laughs> like, apparently the church has some demons running around. Call my name. <laughs> cool but like i don't know it was but like now i just think it's a cool story and i'm like yeah this is great (laughs) it's easy to look back yeah yeah 
Yeah, one of, one of the cool things about our whole experience is that, I mean, he could also see the good spirits. And we know we had family members. Yeah. We had a lot of family members. Um, oh, that's I, cool. I have a, my mom's aunt who she lived down in New Mexico and she had passed away like a week before. And my daughter was still young. She could kind of see him when she was still young. And she said this aunt's name and she had never met her. She pointed and said her name. And so I was like, I think I think we had family members that are like trying to help protect us, help keep us safe or comforted or whatever. I like that idea cool. a lot That's better. A, yeah. yeah. That's not better. Yeah. So I know I know we had a few. I know we had a few that were trying to help us out. So have any of you guys ever used a Ouija board? I mean, that's cool. No. Yeah, it was like strictly for business. Sorry, Joanna's like, that is a no for me. No No for me also. I was just curious. You guys should should have seen her face. (laughs) That makes sense. I've never tried any of that stuff because I I believe, so I don't need to invite anything in. Same. And I I believe that that can bring the bad stuff in. So. But, you know, even people who don't believe sometimes, like, the power of intention, like, it, it also kind of brings things in. Even if you, like, don't truly believe in the supernatural, if you mess with stuff like that and, and, you know, get yourself psyched out and whatever, then things might happen that you don't want to happen. Anyway. Yeah, I kind of see it as opening a door. Like, you open it a crack mm-hmm. and anything can slither in, whether or not you're, like let's open the door all the way or just peek right. inside like no yeah. you're still there's still a crack there <laughs> things can slow yeah. or more like, yeah or more yeah exactly and especially if you don't believe in anything like you don't know what you're doing yeah <laughs> like you just don't know how much you're opening that door be safe then <laughs> yes definitely no i think that's like i mean obviously i don't wish for you to deal with this but it's cool that you can bring that perspective into our lives of somebody who like experiences yeah. this mm-hmm. and stuff you know and has has that yeah i yeah i think we're gonna like i said i think we're gonna be dealing with it for and as he gets older we're just gonna have to figure out how to help him protect himself you know yeah and navigate right. it yeah. because, especially if things get scarier you right know? Because we think that one of the, the, I think that one of the hugest reasons why we were dealing with it was because he, like, he would have full-on conversations with this spirit in our house, and it would wake him up, and in our current house, he likes to have his closet door closed because there's something in there that he just doesn't want to deal with, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Not as fun when it's happening. No, to you it's not. And it, versus yeah, and watching it on TV. In fact, a lot of people are like, "You should write a book." I'm like, I don't want to relive that while I'm writing. Like, yeah, let me put some distance, like a few decades, right. and then maybe, maybe, maybe I'll write down my. You're like become the next Stephen King or something. <laughs> right. on the other side of it no that's really true because as writers like we live in our books and you do not want to do that again i think that's why i love reading about serial killers and like bloody mystery stories but i don't think i could ever write one just because i can't i don't want to put myself in the position of having to think like that like i don't Mm -hmm. know it just but i'll read it all day long like i've probably read 15 or 20 serial killer books in the last like three weeks i've just been on a binge wow. oh wow just committed. committed okay so <laughs> so speaking the, the whole our listeners are like you guys all need to be <laughs> what's happening here <laughs> we're like no sorry um but speaking let's talk about books for a second because uh, Abby mentioned it so nicely. You know, segue in. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just slither in there. No. Um, what are some of your top recent reads then? Like, I'm I'm ready for this because I also read serial killer books, just not recently because I'm not reading anything. Well, <laughs> right I just so happened to write them all on a handy dandy sticky note. So be prepared, guys. I love prepared. <laughs> you know. Yep. So I just discovered Mike <laughs> Owens. Uh, he's on Kindle Unlimited, okay. but he's written a couple different trilogies. 
Um, but one of them I really liked was his Zoe Bentley series. So she's a like a criminal profiler, basically. But I like her Ooh. because she's she's unlikable. And so it's just a really unique take on a character. Like she's kind of abrasive, kind of, I don't know. She's not like fun and flirty and out to solve a murder. Like she takes her <laughs> job seriously. And I don't know. I just really like that. And I love um, Andrew Maine's stuff. Maine as in M-A-Y-N-E. But he just put out a new series. It's still ongoing called like the um, Underwater Investigative Unit. And the first one is called The Girl Beneath the Sea. But that's awesome because the main character is a underwater archaeologist. So she's the person that goes in when the police need to find evidence or whatever that's been lost in the ocean Mm -hmm. or lost at sea or like a body or whatever. She's the person who dives in to go retrieve that. So I've just never seen that before. So I've been really loving that. Yeah, that's really cool. I know you recommended that to me like a while back and I added it on my Kindle, but then I realized I actually have a paper copy. So oh, I no way! <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. cool. This is awesome. I guess I love that too. Anyway, yeah. sorry, continue. And then <laughs> I just binged the trilogy, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I think the last oh, book yeah. came out like two days ago and I've already read it, <laughs> but it's so good. I love, there is a twist in the third book that I actually did not see coming and I was really happy about that. But I totally ripped through those books. That's also on my TBR. Yeah. And then... I'm very behind. Oh, uh, <laughs> Victoria Schwab's City of Ghosts trilogy. It's middle grade, but her the main character's parents are actually ghost hunters. And so they go to different cities throughout the world and like film a documentary about all the local ghosts and stuff but she's the one who can actually see the ghosts and her best friend is a ghost and it's just a really fun cute story for like light spooky reading what's that one called again i feel like i would love a middle grade yeah Uh, the first one's called city of ghosts i love victoria schwab she writes like really dark stuff so like a middle grade would probably be and i like middle grade anyway yeah it's perfect it's perfect that's cool. I will also have a list of all these books for you guys so you can go to one place and look them up. But, Joanna doesn't need um, to ask her to repeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. But yeah, no, I want to make it as easy as possible for you guys to read these books. So, you know, I will make a list. But is there anything you're reading, Stacy? that's like... No, but while she was talking, or... I was just thinking I should read uh, Stalking Jack the Ripper because I have not read it yet and it's sitting on my shelf. So oh, yeah. I should read that. Um, I've been in a big reading slump. I have not been reading much at all. The only thing I've read in the last like two or three months is Lore Olympus, uh, which is not spooky. And um, I just read like <laughs> the first, the whole five books, um, the beginning of the series for the Fever series by Karen Marine Moaning. Oh, I don't know that one. <gasps> my gosh. Yeah. Those are, those are my staples. They're good. Say, I reread those. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit. I love those books yeah. so much. They're not young adult. They're they're adult. <laughs> it, it, it's not really like the tone I usually read. I think it's more like adult than I usually read. Um, and I don't mean like the mm-hmm. content necessarily. It's like the tone. But um, but it was really cool. Yeah. I liked reading. She goes to Ireland and learns supernatural, and she sees the Fae yep. and realizes she can see the Fae. And some of them are very very creepy. Like suck the life from you, disgusting looking, creepy. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It, Ooh, I like. And that. it's kind of. Yeah, I love it was kind that. of like a slow pace. It doesn't have like these big, like plotish moments. It was just really fun to read this. She get she ends up owning a bookstore or something. It's fun. So yeah, it's really fun. I, and I went to I went to Dublin and I like was like yeah, this yeah. is where she was doing this and this is where <laughs> she was doing this. I get, it was like a really cool experience because I read those books like right before I went to Ireland and so I'm like yeah. oh like I get to actually see because. She's really good at writing, like, actual places of, like, where, like, realistically Mm. these things would happen, which I really kind of love. So it, like, blurs that fiction. It's a very fun series, yeah. Fun. Yeah, I like it. Anything else? Is that it? (laughs) Okay, cool. Joanna? (laughs) Oh, we're not going to talk about what I've been reading. I've been in a major reading slump. But um, I... So I don't read spooky stories kind of for the same reason that 
I don't know. Right, watch right. Yeah. That makes sense. But uh, Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula is so good. Have you guys read? You know, I never that? finished yeah. it, but is I read it in middle grade. Is that the original? Yeah. <laughs> in middle, middle school. The original. Middle school. You read it in middle school? I didn't finish it. I read like three quarters of it. I didn't read it all at the time. You had to no, read it? No, I just picked it up from the library and I loved okay. it. Okay, <laughs> okay. I loved it too. <laughs> That's, That's really good. That's such a answer though. <laughs> I didn't finish it, but I loved it. Like, I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I read a lot of, I definitely read a lot of serial killer books during this time, but I also read a lot of cozy mysteries. Mm, um, yes. Obviously, because I also write cozy mysteries. So it's like, I write paranormal cozy mysteries. I should probably clarify that. So it's really fun because then I get to like, kind of have like a Halloween-esque story anytime during the year <laughs> because she's always seeing ghosts or she's like zombie or something like that you know what I mean like it has like that feel like my main character is a witch and she's just kind of rediscovering it for herself after her power goes on a fritz so she's kind of like one of those people who is just like oh my gosh another ghost like give me a break like <laughs> not excited which about I it kind of love no she's just like oh, go away I just want to have a normal conversation anyway no um so I do read a lot of like cozy mysteries and I binge those really fast and um that's really fun because it like gives me those you know feels like October feels mm -hmm. Uh, but obviously I like my staple movies are or books are Riley Sager he's like my favorite when it comes to um, like thriller books how and do you spell Sager I, I'm writing this down S-A-G-E-R I believe yeah I think that's correct all right and I think the most Halloweeny one is the home before dark I think that's like the one that's like the most atmospheric out of all of his books. All the other ones are more staple murder mystery thriller, but like The Home Before Dark is the most atmospheric one. And then I just started a book and I can't think of what it's called. So that's not helpful <laughs> to you guys. But it's great so far. <laughs> no, I have also been in a reading slump. So my reads for this month are already like behind my usual reads for October which is sad but also my brain just can't handle anything right now yeah. not before release day like I just can't think of anything Abby read enough books for all of us so we're, we're covered I did I really, really I know did. exactly <laughs> <laughs> she handled this for us thank you I gotcha I downloaded yeah. a whole bunch of books um I'm going to Scotland Ooh. next year to walk the West Highland Way. And, Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. And so I looked for any thriller set in Scotland that I could find. So I have probably nice. another 10 sitting on my Kindle waiting for me to binge read. <laughs> so I am all prepared. Are they serial killer books about? <laughs> I'm hoping so. I know there's definitely murders. <laughs> Stacey's like, oh, maybe not. I don't think so, but Never okay. Much, but <laughs> I know. It's dead bodies, obviously. Right. Influenced by both. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, clearly. That's funny. I love that so much. I'm gonna obviously gonna be asking you for Rex. I do love um serial killer books that are set in other countries, like or murder mysteries that are set in other countries. Because I just find it really fascinating to see how other police yeah. force and detectives work, like yeah. the brain and stuff. Yeah, it's like they'll look for things that are different than like an American written one would be. You yeah, know? yeah, I don't know. It's just really cool. Um, and I love like I love the mind. Like I love studying the mind. Like Criminal Minds is one of my favorite shows that I also watch before I fall asleep. Yes, I am weird. Um, but it's one of those like where they just really get dark sometimes. Like when you're talking about, you know, people's mot motivations and like all that stuff, and you're like, oh my gosh, like people's brains really anyway. So, like slight slight weaving off their conversation but anyway uh back to october and things in october i had another question for you guys like our birthdays <laughs> in october okay you can continue yes <laughs> <laughs> no i wanted to know if you guys eat anything specific in october november besides like thanksgiving food like if there's like a food that you consume during like the cozy season spooky season i guess besides pumpkin <laughs> I was going to say, kidding. oh, I am a pumpkin. basic, you know what? I, <laughs> yeah, me too. I like the pumpkin. Yeah. I mean, that works, I guess. Sorry. I, I'm sorry to disappoint you. No. 
<laughs> no, I just people just find it so weird, funny that I don't like anything pumpkin. I'm like, I like pumpkin seeds when they're roasted. Like, I'll eat that. <laughs> like, that's does that count? No. What about you, Joanna? Is there anything that you guys like bake during this? I don't bake. This time of the year? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> or food? It doesn't have to be um, bake. Candy corn. Oh, yeah. I know a yes, lot of people yeah. hate candy, like candy corn, corn, but I'm on team I candy love corn. it. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. yeah, I like candy corn too. I think it's one of those you yeah. either love them or hate mm-hmm. them. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, for people sure. Hate them, mm-hmm. yeah. burn it's, them. Like, <laughs> yeah, the people don't they're hate very, them. Yeah, they're we'll very vocal you know. <laughs> about how much they hate them. <laughs> I used to fill my pockets with candy corn as a kid growing up and just eat them during the school day That's and smart. when I was home. <laughs> better that's than cute. cookies that's what my son puts in his pocket i eat them weirdly i eat each color at a time me oh, too I I, that's what i do too oh, that's how i like, eat them bite off the tip first yeah the tip's the worst you gotta get rid of it <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. we're in such good company here <laughs> i was worried i was I gonna get that. dragged through something for saying i liked candy corn but these are my hey, people right. the these are my people back, man <laughs> yep <laughs> clearly I mean, really, you guys don't do anything special. Well, like, like so now sad. that no, I'm now that it's getting colder, um, and so, so I'll do this throughout the winter. But I love steamers. Wait, wait, wait! It's it's steamed milk. So I got one of those um, like frother things. It makes the milk mm-hmm. fluffy. That it well, yeah. But I just heat up the milk, and then I get those um, like flavor squirter things. What are they called? The the syrups yes <laughs> okay <laughs> so i'll do a few squirts of caramel or peppermints in my steamer i love it i love hot chocolate but hot chocolate is too sugary too rich we do hot sometimes. chocolate we like to get so. those like the flavored packets we usually do it more for like christmas but um but yeah we do that a lot too they have at sam's club they'll have the pack of like eight different flavors and it's like salted caramel and s'mores and yeah like, oh, cool. yeah i drink my weight in hot chocolate <laughs> probably every week in the fall <laughs> <laughs> like i'll i'll take that makes sense. literal chocolate like chocolate shavings and melt it in milk Ooh. so it's like pure actual chocolate, chocolate. Yeah, it's like yeah, real actual hot chocolate. i bought a, thing, a tin of like real tea that was peppermint it was chocolate peppermint tea and it had flakes of real chocolate in it that was delicious Ooh, yum Oh, that sounds yummy. I've made the Nutella mm. hot chocolate before. <gasps> What's that? And that was, it. it's hot chocolate with Nutella. Like you just it's drop it like in and stir it? The Yeah, like you have, um, I think it's milk and then Nutella and you just kind of put it on a stove and just melt it until it's like the the texture that you want or the consistency that you want and then i remember i added i don't remember if it was like cinnamon or something to it too and then you also like cover it in peppermint flakes i think that sounds so good Oh, good. It's like heaven. Yeah, I need to I need to get some Nutella and make some. I know it's so good. And you can make it like thicker so you can it can be like an a sauce that you know, easier to dip than actual Nutella but not quite and it can be a little bit less sweet if you add more milk to it. Like it just depends on how you make it. And there's like so many possibilities and it's so freaking good. Like oh, I'm going to so try good. that in my <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, do that. That'll be fun. Okay, now I want Me some. too. Anyway. <laughs> I also love chai note, lattes. No. You guys ever drink chai? Okay, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love those. I mean, not as often as hot mm. chocolate. But... Abby's like, after I drink all the hot chocolate, I can't drink anything yeah, else. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I still dream about the most perfect cup of hot chocolate I ever had. Like, it just sticks to right, well, memory. All right, well, tell us. What? We w- yeah, we went yeah, on. Where? For what? We went on this girls trip, like all the girls on my side of the family, to a place in Connecticut, and it was this like super fancy European hotel. Like I will never stay in another place as fancy in my life. But they had <laughs> liquid chocolate, like it was liquid chocolate that you thinned with cream. That's how thick it was, and it was, and okay. you drink that, and it was so good oh my god that sounds good yeah i had to limit myself to one a day because i just wanted it at every meal <laughs> one a day <laughs> oh my god it randomly reminds me of um butterbeer 
Have you guys ever been to like Harry Potter World or anything? It's like the it's best thing I ever list. drank ever in my life. I really That's do they so... actually use butter? In I don't it? know. I that they do. <laughs> There's beer in it. But... <laughs> She's like, I don't care. It tastes great. <laughs> non alcoholic drink, but um, it's like creamy on the. It's like cream soda, but it's not really as carbonated. And then it's got this like thick, frothy, like whipped creamish top, and it's amazing. Mm. Yum. Mm. Just, we're just craving yeah. yeah. milk. Oh, you know, who I'm... needs food? It's funny. Just give me the sugar. Right. Oh, I got my apple crisp. Here you go. I, <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I was telling Joanna and Stacy earlier, but I made homemade apple crisp with apples from my backyard, and I've got Aww. a huge like. Look how big this container is. It's like bigger than. I'm my not gonna lie, Abby. You should have led with that. With what do you eat in the fall? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like, We're still on the topic. <laughs> right, that's oh, that's really cool. I love that. It's from like your backyard. Yeah, it was the first time we had apples, but the st- we had the stupid hailstorm come in and it destroyed everything. Mm. So it took me like four hours in the kitchen chopping away all the bad bits of apple to like salvage what was left. So it tastes even so. better because it took so much work, right? But yeah, exactly. I was just yeah. watching Netflix as I was chopping up apples, so it was a good day. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Apple trees are tricky. Sometimes they only produce every other year. Yeah, especially I'm in Colorado, and so the weather here is like, you don't bet on the weather. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> so fruit trees tend to struggle a bit. Mm-hmm. Utah's the same. <laughs> I don't know. We have baby fruit trees so it's gonna be a while until we have anything no i mean now i'm lying the lemons are like covered in lemon the lemon tree is as tall as i am so it's still tiny but it's like has more lemons on it than leaves at this point (laughs) i'm like good job baby you're doing so (laughs) great (laughs) but everything else is like here's one (laughs) have one for a while no um that's really cool anyway I like that conversation. I think we can wrap it, wrap it up here. Not yet. Okay. Because we have to talk Sorry. about your release, Valia. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll talk about your release. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not on my list. It's of on to my talk list. Because <laughs> I'm super okay, excited yes. for this book. <laughs> Oh, I know it's gonna oh, be so you. good. I am excited. It's I mean it it's out now. If you guys listening on October six, it is out in the world. Yay. I'm very excited. I love that cover. Um it's gorgeous. I know. I love the cover. My cover designer really did an amazing job with that. And it was really funny because when I first was like pushed into writing fairy tales because you know i just get pushed into stuff all the time <laughs> yeah you but do. it's fine <laughs> don't don't worry about it no um but it was like a it was an encouragement of something i already wanted to do because i wrote the skaska books you know a couple years back which was like the first dive into the russian fairy tales for me and writing this book uh for those of you who don't know it's a beauty and the beast retelling the russian version uh, with a mafia heiress and a wolf prince and obviously a bargain but like it's it's great i love it so much sorry <laughs> to toot my own horn Toot here, it. But, um <laughs> Yeah, I just, I loved it so much. And I love that I really, like, stepped into my Russian heritage for this one. And, like, really was like, no, like, I'm going to go all out. Because the first time I wrote it, or the first time I wrote the fairy tales, I was like, I'll add some Russian into it. But, like, it's still not going to be, you know. But this time, there's just, like, even little traditions that people who grew up in a family, you know, or in Russia, like, they would see. But people who didn't, they would be like, oh, that's a cool tradition for a family to have, you know, or mm-hmm. something like that. And so it was just really, really fun to have that. And I just really love these characters so much. And it was just it was just a joy to write. And I am just so excited it's out of the world. Yay. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. I read the first anyway. chapter this morning <laughs> and it was good. I can't wait to get my hands on the book. Thank you. I appreciate that. Will it be uh, up on Etsy? Because yeah. that's kind of what I'm waiting for. It is okay. up on Etsy, actually, uh, right now, because I did, like, a pre-order campaign, and so I put uh, a number on Etsy for, you know, hardcover, pre-order, sign. I looked for it, and I couldn't find it, so I'll hop on when we're done. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I should probably look at those links. <laughs> if you can't find it, oops. 
Uh, no, but yeah, release day, release week is always really weird. Obviously, the ladies know it's kind of like one of those like, are you excited or you're not excited at the same time? Like you're terrified continuously, but then you're trying to figure out if you're excited. My parents have been amazing. They, <laughs> in the rain, took me and did a photo shoot for like a countdown picture. Oh. So. <laughs> They, yeah, they're, they're so, they're so extra, but I love them so much for it. My dad was really getting into it, which was amazing. And then on Sunday he was like, here's some cake for number, for day three. And then, so we're doing like a day three, two, and one, and like the release Cute. day. And we've never done that for any of my books because we just like, oh, it's out. Who, next book, <laughs> like, you know, but my parents are like, nope, we're celebrating every single one of these Aww. days now. Like, have whatever. they read so, it? Anyway, it's that. a whole thing. And no, they haven't. Okay. Um, my mom is in school and work and clinicals and all this stuff so it's like she's very sad that she can't read them right now yeah. but it's um, super cute that they're so excited for it though yeah they're just they're my biggest supporters and like honestly without my parents and the queens like my career would look so different so let me just gush yeah. about my queens for a second you guys <laughs> listeners they're the best okay <laughs> like seriously this group is amazing and that's all i have to say about that but volley is good like she has given me so many pep talks that I have needed <laughs> so much. Well, good. she's amazing I'm too. Glad. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Moving on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but someone doesn't like compliments. <laughs> no, no, somebody does not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, we're yeah. I love this group, and I love that we get to do these episodes. And I hope you guys are enjoying them too. This format for season two is a little different, but I think it's so fun because we just get to be a little bit more, you know, personal with you guys. So definitely keep listening because we'll keep recording and having fun. And yeah, yeah. What was else? What else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, follow us on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> at reading queen's pod and talk to us there we'd love to hear what your favorite movies are during halloween if you have any foods if you have any spooky experiences we want Ooh, to yeah. yes. know mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you had a crush on casper too oh yeah yes. definitely add that in please or one of the gargoyles we'll <laughs> yeah. <take> on them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah just let us know we'd like to know no but yeah before you go please give us a follow on your favorite podcast platform and leave a star review or just a review either one works both work better it's great those really help us so please take a second and then tell your friends and then be back next week for more fun we'll talk to you then bye, bye. bye.